Genetics. Okay, you can see genetics is worth between 15 and 27.5% of your paper. From this, you can see that genetics comes up every single year in section C as a 60 mark question. That's your 15%. It usually as well comes up in section A um, of your paper. In 2024, it came up in A, B and C. So overall genetics was worth 27.5% this year. So hereditary, what does it mean? Hereditary means is the passing on of characteristics from the parents to the offspring. So of our chromosomes, our chromosomes are made up of DNA and protein. So 40% DNA and 60% protein. And on that chromosome, these sections are called genes. So only about 4% of DNA consists of genes that are called, um, that are code. The rest is all called non-coding DNA. So it doesn't carry a protein, um, doesn't carry the code for a protein. So what is a gene? Very important, it is a piece of DNA that codes for a protein. You need to know that definition is important there. So it's a piece of DNA that codes for um, a protein. So the unit of inheritance are composed of DNA. So DNA will code for a protein, which will in turn tell a cell how to act. So here we have our chromosomes here made up of our DNA and protein. So non-coding DNA, if asked, and asked in 2024, and this is what we wanted, we wanted it does not contain the genetic instructions for the production of a protein. So what students were forgetting was the genetic instructions. That was important, really important to, to get the three marks there. So the non-coding structures are your sugar and your phosphate. Now, coding DNA, that contains the genetic instructions for the production of a protein. And again, what's really important there is students remember genetic instructions. So the coding part is the base part. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and they can ask that as a question. What does DNA stand for? So it was Watson and Crick in 1953. They are the two scientists that are um, announced the discovery of DNA. So they shared the Nobel Prize for medicine um, and the work that they did. So, but with the help, which is really important, of Rosalind Franklin and Morris Wilkins, they were able to build a model of DNA. So DNA is found in the nucleus. It is also found in the mitochondria and DNA is also found in the chloroplasts. So it codes for making proteins. The um, structure of DNA, which is here to the side, this is known as your double helix. And we have bonds here that we'll get to in a moment, T and A, C and G, and what's holding those, by those or sorry, these bases, T, A, G and C, what's holding them together is hydrogen bonds. So the bases of DNA is A and T, C and G, adenine and thymine, guanine and cytosine. Okay, apple tart or chicken goujons. Um, a past student did say crazy girlfriend, so whatever you remember. So apple tart, chicken goujons. A will only pair with T, C will only pair with G. These are complementary to one another. Now, each nucleotide is made up of a phosphate group, which contains a 5-carbon deoxyribose sugar and a nitrogen base. And many nucleotides together forms polynucleotides. So here we have our deoxyribose sugar, we have our phosphate, and what will uh, branch off one of those is one of our bases, adenine and thymine, cytosine or guanine. And what's holding those two bases together is the hydrogen bonds. And we need to know how many hydrogen bonds are between these bases. So I just remember AT2CG3. Okay, for the base and the sorry, let me rub that out. AT2CG3. So there's two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine. There's three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine. Nucleotides. What do nucleotides consist of? They consist of a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and the base. And yes, you need to know that. And yes, you may be 
um, asked to draw that. So nucleotides have three parts. They have a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogen base. So the base could be A, T, C, or G. So they're joined together, forming a long chain on one side of the ladder. And then what will form on the other side of our ladder is the uh, complementary base pair. And they will then twist up together to form the double helix. Now, this then brings us to purines and pyrimidines. And we need to know the difference between purines and pyrimidines. So of the four bases, two are purines and two are pyrimidines. So within each base pair, you have a purine with a pyrimidine. Your pu purines are double ring molecules, okay? And they'll always pair with a pyrimidine. Your purines are adenine and guanine. Your pyrimidines are a single ring mo molecule, so you can see here, C. They'll always pair up with a purine and cytosine and thymine. So, how do you re Member. So pyrimidine is PY or IM, cytosine is CY, thymine is THY. That's how I would try and tell my students how to remember your pyrimidines. And if you know your two pyrimidines, then hopefully you should remember your two purines. Now, of our genetic code, so it's the sequence of bases in DNA that give the instructions of the cell to make a protein. So a gene is a piece of DNA that will code for the protein. So genes work when they are sent into the cytoplasm to make um, a certain protein. So a protein is made up of a chain of over 200 amino acids. They will be joined together by a peptide bond. There's 20 different types of amino acids that exist. So three consecutive bases along a DNA will code for one amino acid. Now, they can be called a triplet or a codon. So this would be an example here of your TAT. This would be a triplet or a codon, and this would code for one amino acid, these three letters here.